Mr. Speaker, last night the Rules Committee met and reported a rule, House Resolution 996, providing for the consideration of two measures, H.R. 485 and H.R. 863. The rule pro provides for the consideration of H.R. 485 under a structured rule with one hour of debate and H.R. 863 under a closed rule with two hours of debate equally divided and controlled by the chair and the ranking minority member of the Committee of Jurisdiction or their de designees. The rule provides for one motion to recommit for H.R. 485. The rule also deems passed H.R. 995, which appoints the impeachment managers. I would also like to mention that all, all amendments offered to H.R. 485 were made in order. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in support of the rule and the underlying bills. H.R.S. 863, impeaching Alejandro Nicholas Mayorkas, the Secretary of Homeland Security for High Crimes and Misdemeanors, and H.R. 485, the Protecting Health Care for All Patients Act of 2023. Today, this body begins consideration of one of its most solemn constitutional duties, the consideration of articles of impeachment against a federal official. House Resolution 863, impeaching Alejandro Nicolas Mayorkas, Secretary of Homeland Security for High Crimes and Misdemeanors, includes two articles of impeachment. Willful and systematic refusal to comply with the law and breach of the public trust. On February 2nd, 2021, Alejandro Mayorkas was sworn in as the seventh United States Secretary of Homeland Security by Vice President Kamala Harris. On this day, Secretary Mayorkas solemnly swore to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. He swore that he took this sacred obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, and swore to faithfully discharge the duties of the office. Mr. Speaker, I submit to you that this oath of office, sworn on February 2nd, 2021, has indeed been broken. Since President Biden took office, the United States Customs and Border Protection has encountered more than 7 million illegal migrants along the southwest border. 3.3 million have been released into the United States interior, including 312 individuals on the terrorist screening data set. In 2003, Customs and Border Protection encountered over 2.5 million illegal migrants attempting to cross the United States' southern border. That's an all-time high for a fiscal year. In December alone, Customs and Border Protection encountered 302,000 illegal migrants attempting to cross the United States' southern border, the highest number of unlawful migrant crossings in a single month in recorded history. Mr. Speaker, Secretary Mayorkas has shown willful and systematic refusal to comply with the law time and again. He has willfully refused to comply with numerous detention requirements spelled out in the Immigration and Nationality Act, but has instead implemented a mass catch and release program whereby apprehended legal migrants are released into the interior of the country without any effective way to ensure their return before an immigration court. Mr. Secretary Mayorkas has also willfully misused parole authority and laid out in the Immigration and Nationality Act that permits parole to be granted only on a case-by-case -case basis, temporarily, and for urgent humanitarian reasons or significant public benefit. Mr. Speaker, Secretary Mayorkas has not only failed his solemn statutory duty to control and guard the border of the United States, to protect and defend his country and the Constitution, but he's also breached the public trust. Secretary Mayorkas has willfully failed to put in place or enforce initiatives that he abandoned that would enable the Department of Homeland Security to maintain operational control of our southwest border. He has also breached the trust of Congress and the American people by knowingly making false statements about the, refuse, the results of his refusal to comply with the law. The American people, and certainly those that I represent in Texas, have had enough of the Secretary's lies. Despite undeniable evidence that his gross negligence towards securing our southern border is endangering American families and communities across the country, Secretary Mayorkas thinks what he is doing is just fine, but he could not be more wrong. 
Contrary to what the Secretary says, the border is not secure. America is in fact less safe because of his negligence and because of his numerous failures. Since Secretary Mayorkas will not resign, Congress must take this action. Every day that Secretary Mayorkas remains as the head of Department of Homeland Security is another day of pathetic disservice to the American people. Mr. Speaker, many of us have been to the border. I've been many times, and I've seen how understaffed and under-resourced and unsupported Customs and Border Protection is. And my friends on the other side of the aisle might have you believe it's not because of a lack of funding. While more funding may be helpful for better technology or building and repairing the border wall, it will not make up for the time spent by Customs and Border Patrol agents at the funerals of their co-workers or time spent wondering if they are next. It's shameful that these brave men and women aren't getting the support that they need. The Biden administration's policy of open borders and amnesty is killing Americans, and Alejandro Mayorkas, whose primary job it is to secure the homeland, refuses to do his job. The worsening conditions of the men and women who have sworn to protect our border and actually honored that oath is unacceptable. We must hold that those accountable who have willfully refused to honor their oath. Mr. Speaker, this rule also allows for consideration of H.R. 485, the Protecting Health Care for All Patients Act, that I introduced along with Chairwoman McGoris Rogers of the Energy and Commerce Committee, Chairman Smith, and my friend from Ohio, Dr. Winstrup. This bill <clears throat> aims to preserve access to life-saving cures and to prevent discrimination for Americans with disabilities. I practiced medicine for nearly 30 years. I treated each patient as a human being, not just a diagnosis. Quality-adjusted life years measurements are cruel and hinder the physician's ability to care for and treat all patients with dignity. The government should never be, be able to decide or determine the value of a life to approve or deny care. Mr. Speaker, many years ago, the Affordable Care Act banned Medicare from using quality-adjusted life years, a metric often used in cost-effective analyses, widely known to discriminate against people with disabilities. The purpose of the quality-adjusted life year metric assigns a person living with a disability a lower value of a year of life than a person who is considered to be in good health. The quality-adjusted life year often fails to consider outcomes meaningful to patients such as the impact on the ability to work, on the impact on caregiving needs. In a quality-adjusted life year-based assessment, a person living with conditions like heart disease, ALS, or sickle cell disease will be considered to be of less worth than someone else. Often, quality-adjusted life years are used by countries that have government-controlled health care systems to devalue treatment for those with chronic conditions and disabilities. This concept has been pushed by socialist health care advocates for years. Thankfully, the United States of America has not fallen totally prey to these harmful ideologies, at least not yet. I would like to remind my friends on the other side of the aisle that the first quality adjusted life year ban within the Affordable Care Act passed with strong Democrat support. Therefore, this bill should be passed with strong Democrat support as well. It is not the government's place to determine whether a person living with a chronic condition or a disability is of less worth. This is why we need to prohibit the use of quality adjusted life years in all federal programs and ensure that all human life has inherent value. Republicans will continue to work to reduce the government's hand in health care, and I urge colleagues to support us, join us in supporting H.R. 485. Mr. Speaker, I stand in strong support of the rule and the underlying bills, urge my fellow members to support the rule, and I will reserve the balance of my time.